In this video, I recorded a time lapse of me modeling a N64 cartridge. For this, I'm using box modeling or subdivision surface modeling. So I started out with a plane and with that modifier on, as well as a mirror modifier, I basically am trying to find the right forms for the front facing panel. In this model, I split each part up into its own section, kind of like it would be like with a real manufacturer. So basically the, the front case, the back case, and the chip inside and all the components on the chip. When working on anything that references a, a real life object, I try my best to get as much reference as I can from lots of different angles. Sometimes I even search YouTube to find people spinning the object around and see little nooks and crannies that photos on Google might not always show you. For areas like the front label as well as the, the back label and the hole for the screws on the back, I end up using a Boolean modifier instead of um, creating the edge loops to do it in the subdivision surface modeling. This is just easier and allows the model to stay super clean. Here I duplicated the front to create the back. And the main difference between the front and back is that the side edge curve is a little less rounded and there is, are a few little nooks and crannies on the, the bottom sides there that need to be re reformed. In general, there are lots of N64 cartridges you could find on something like Turbo Squid, but in general, I like to remodel things myself. You never know exactly what you're getting when you purchase those models. And for my purposes, I make certain tweaks for its aesthetic appeal. And it can end up becoming very difficult to make those tweaks when you're dealing with a model um, that may have bad topology. Things might not be separated. Um, it ends up being a lot of work anyway to reshade it and, and have it the way you want it to be. So. I like to go through the process of making it myself. I find it fun as well. Here I am making the inner circuit board. One thing you may note is that the, the chips on the board actually face the back of the cartridge, but I knew I was gonna render it from the front view. So I actually put a lot of these chips on the front so that it would be a little more interesting. It's not exactly true to what the cartridge is, but you know, no one really is going to notice. In general, I try to keep as much as I can in the workflow in a single program. I used to learn all sorts of tools and jump between them, but I find if you can do everything in one program, it really allows you to flow. So in the, for the most part, I try and use Blender for every, everything from modeling, sculpting, texture painting, shading, etc. But this circuit board was a little complicated, so it's actually much easier to do this one in Photoshop. The lasso tool makes it specifically easy in Photoshop to do these little circuit etchings. You may notice that what I'm doing may not be exactly perfect, but it's close enough to convey the idea and 
no one's going to be looking at it in that much detail and zoomed in. So it works for what it's being used for. Here I am starting the shading process. For the most part, I usually start in Eevee and then assuming that I'm going to render it in cycles, I'll switch over to that to get the finer detail in. Again, for the textures, even on the chips, I'm not matching the font perfectly. It's close enough and the little detail adds a lot of realism to it. Finally, I'm previewing it in cycles. I added a little vertical wave shader that creates kind of this scan line effect that makes the PCB or the circuit board look a lot more realistic. And now I'm adding the inner plastic that kind of holds the circuit and the two panels of the cartridge together. One thing you may notice when I'm shading is I almost always add a noise texture and that is placed in the, the bump or the normal of the shader. This just adds a general level of realism. In real life, there's nothing that's perfectly smooth. So, you know, by default, you could even just, or I, I add a noise texture and just put like something like uh, 1000 or 2000 on the scale. Is very subtle, but it affects how the, the light reflects off those surfaces. And in general, you'll see that I'm using kind of like this future retro aesthetic. So I'm using modern games like Elden Ring and, and Death Stranding, but on obviously an N64, which it's not on. I think this juxtaposition, this contrast creates a level of intrigue and interest that makes you makes you think, oh, what would this game look like on the N64? What's a low poly version of Elden Ring Ring look like? And it uh, it just makes it more fun and playful. You also may have seen I quickly opened up another file where I had a cassette that had this translucent plastic. Um, I spent a while on that previous project's um, plastic shader, so I just wanted to see what it looked like on here. But I ended up deleting it and making a, a brand new one for the purpose of this render. I think the previous shader I had didn't work as well as a new one. This new one basically is using subsurface scattering, translucency, and a little bit of alpha. I debated for a while what the front label should be for the Elden Ring. I ended up going with the classic current box art for the game just for legibility and for people to quickly glance at it and know, oh, this is Elden Ring. I think if I use the 
the witch image that I made custom that people might not fully grasp it immediately. So for quickness and quickness of readability, I ended up using the classic box art. To animate everything, I parented each part and then animated those parents. And uh, for the overall rotation, I made another empty. And for each of those parents, I used a a copy transform to allow it, the whole, everything to rotate together, but have the parts move away from each other on their local axis. I really like the drips in Death Stranding, so I thought it could be cool to have a cartridge that had both a diffuse material and a translucent material on it. If you like this video, please subscribe. If you want to see me make other things, please leave a comment and tell me what you'd like to see. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.